Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to break down the Samco hose kit install on our 2018 STG Suzuki GSXR 1000R project bike. Jason, my man, this install is for you because you bought the bike and you asked to have the Samco hose kit installed. So I thought, hey man, if I'm gonna go through the effort to put it on, we may as well go ahead and shoot one final video. I thought the last one was gonna be those hilla bars, but it wasn't. It was a Samco hoses. What's the point of putting these on your bike? Number one, they look epic. Let's come over to the other side. Look at this, unbelievable, I can't believe that I let it go and didn't do this myself and waited for the dude who bought the bike to request that it be done before it leaves the shop. They look amazing. The quality of these hoses exceeds that of the OEM stuff. The silicone hoses, they I've seen some claims made too that it might help lower cooling temps. You know, I wouldn't really focus on that too much because the just quality of the hose is better. It allows the coolant to move over easier. When you get down to it, you're putting these on because they are sick. Look at this bike. That really sets it off. Another thing he asked for was to swap out the red chain adjusters from Light Tech with blue. I did that, we did that one off camera, and I gotta confess, it looks pretty darn good. In this install, I'm gonna show you every single step that it takes to install this hose kit. What kind of stuff am I getting myself into? Tool-wise, this is a Suzuki, you don't really need a lot. I used a Phillips screwdriver, used a seven millimeter quarter drive socket on a nut driver with my race body work, not a lot of body work removal. I had a five millimeter T handle, a four millimeter T handle. I think I used a flat bladed screwdriver, a flashlight, a Motion Pro hose tool remover, a drain pan. This is really a pretty basic install, all right? To facilitate it, body work is off fuel tank needs to come off to access the uh, upper hose on the other side to get to the end that meets the engine. Just gonna have to get in there, right? So uh, that one and then the small hose that comes off the top of the radiator, both of those, they were in tight spots. You're also gonna find with the factory hoses, there are these Chinese finger looking, remember you used to get those in your Easter basket when you were a kid, at least I did, I'm really old. So like they're these bamboo things, you put your fingers in and you pull apart and it's locks on your fingers, has these on the OEM hoses protecting the hose. There's areas where these hoses will be touching things that are hot, right? So lower hose here, the upper hose, the small hose here. We detail all that as we go through the video. I chose to take those off the OEM hose and install them on the Samco hose kit. I would recommend that you do the same thing. Up next is the full install. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump right into what will be for sure the last ever install on our Project Bike GSXR 1000R. We need to drain the coolant to facilitate the installation of the Samco hose kit. In order to do that, we're gonna have to remove our bodywork. The bodywork removal on this bike, because it's already been converted to a track bike, may look different than yours if yours is still street, we do have, I believe, a video from way back when we first started this project where I show you how to remove the OEM bodywork. You can refer to that. So we're gonna go ahead and get our lower fairing off the bike first. And once we do that, we'll get the upper removed. Drain pan underneath the bike. And we'll begin draining our coolant. Look at that skill, air ducts and all. Okay, once the bodywork has been removed, we have easy access to the radiator, the hoses and everything, and we can go ahead and begin draining the system. All right, let's go ahead and get this party started. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the safety wire away here from the uh, radiator cap. 
remove the cap. And then we'll go over to the other side of the bike. We're gonna pull the lower radiator hose and let the coolant drain out. As the coolant is draining out, we will uh, need to remove the uh, fuel tank and the air box from the bike. There's one hose that I'm just not gonna be able to access without doing that. Motion Pro hose tool. These have been on there for a minute, so I'm gonna run around and break those loose. All right, when we come back, we'll be removing the fuel tank and the airbox. Okay, go ahead and pull the trim off. to expose the bolts for the seat pan. Need to do that on both sides. Once we have that off, we can get our seat pan bolts out. Five mil internal hex, the others were four. Now we're on to the fuel tank itself. These are also five mil internal hex. From there, you're able to prop the tank up. We'll get in over here, release the uh, fuel line. Go ahead and get a little flat bladed screwdriver in there and release the safety clasp for your fuel pump. You can see that right there, small flat blade. Once you've done that, you're able to pull the fuel line from the tank, I'm gonna reach up inside, push the release on the fuel pump connector and pull down. We can show you that a little bit closer as we move forward with the project. And let's see what size that bolt is. Looks like that's a 10 millimeter. Of all the bikes, I think Suzuki is the easiest one to work on and service. There are two vent lines that are right here. And I'll show those to you once I pull the tank. There's the tank. There's your two vent lines. They were both very readily accessible. 
And that is just the spacer uh, for the fuel tank bolt. Go ahead and pick that up and set that on the bench. And now let's see if we've got ourselves enough access for that hose, which was right here. Okay, here we go. I've got my hoses all laid out. I think we've got enough access to get this done. Most important thing we're going to talk about right now, these clamps. These are the Samco radiator hose clamp kit, right? Comparing them to the OEM, you look here and you're going to see those are open windows through the back side, okay? These are all smooth on the inside. If you use, these are silicone hoses, if you use the OEM hose clamps, number one, these OEM Suzuki's are much thinner, so you have less surface area to clamp. Number two, the silicone's softer, and if you crank these down so they're gonna seal properly, the silicone is gonna end up coming through the windows, ultimately damaging the hoses. They have a warning that comes with the hose kit, basically telling you, don't use your OEM hose clamps, you're gonna ruin your hose kit. Some people are hell-bent to save a couple bucks and they don't want to order the clamps because they're expensive, stainless steel, good clamps. Make sure you do that on your bike. You do not want to reuse your OEM clamps. From there, let's just go ahead now and keep on keeping on. On this Jixer, you can see they have a uh, sheath that covers right like a protective cover for this lower hose even though it's going to cover up a little bit of the blue shit i'm going to put it back on there because you see how the proximity of that hose to the header that's on there for a reason i i would agree with it being there so we're going to move that over to the samco kit so i was able to successfully remove that let's go ahead and slide it over Samco hose. End of the day, not really too difficult to do, and I think this is worthwhile. It's like a Chinese finger you would get in your Easter basket when you're a kid, right? When we come back, I'll have the Chinese finger installed on the Samco hose. Okay, let's go ahead and install our first hose. End of the day, that wasn't really that difficult to get on. My opinion, it needs to be there. But end of the day, it's your bike. You do what you think is appropriate. Go ahead and tuck that up in there. Make sure you have the hose all the way up against the end. All right, I'm going to use a quarter inch nut driver. I'm going to position the hose clamp a little off the end of the hose itself. Start there, and then we'll circle back and obviously double check all these. As we begin to fill the system and burp it, Sometimes you can grab the hose and just give it like a little twist and it'll come right off. Other times you need to get in there. With a hose tool removal, what's nice about this is this will not damage the hose. You're able to do this in such a way where you know, you're not cutting the hose up. You slide a screwdriver up in there and it, uh, you may not have the same outcome. Okay, for this hose, the opening 
on the hose. One side is just a little bit smaller than the other. We're going to put that down here on the bottom. Now that I'm putting these on, I'm asking myself, why did I not install these when I had the bike? Okay, we'll start down here at the radiator, then we're gonna lower the table, and we can uh, address the other end of the hose. And we'll come up here and remove this clamp. Definitely a little tighter in here. Additional light in there, grab the hose remover. Maybe grab a pair of needle nose to get in there. Get that bad boy released from the nipple. And like we had with the other hose, right here at this elbow, there's a protective covering. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna pull the Chinese finger off of this, put that in the elbow of the Samco hose that we're putting on. All right, let's go ahead and thread this up in there. Slide a hose clamp on it first, I think. Work that all the way up. This clamp's readily accessible, so we'll go ahead and do this one first. The ridge on the nipple, you wanna make sure that you, you don't have the clamp resting on that ridge, that you have it to the other side of it. So with each of the nipples, you know, on the radiator and or on the engine, you want to make sure that you don't have the clamp resting on that ridge that you're, you're clamping to the opposite side of that, like so. Okay, next up is a smaller hose that's going to require a little work to gain enough access. I'll raise the bike back up for a second. Cut that cable tie. Five mil internal hex, eight mil hex. We're going to take this off.
two internal hex five up here. Let's get our voltage regulator out of the way. Already have it unplugged. Okay, and that's just gonna get us a little more room over here. You can see back in there. And then we have two pressure clamps that we're gonna need to get a pair of pliers to remove. These are just spring loaded. These will be re replaced with the Samco hose clamps. Go ahead and use a standard pair of common pliers there. And then back here on the engine side, see if we can't uh, come in from the outside here with these needle nose. Sure, if I have that. There we go. That one's off and resting on the hose. Probably gonna need the hose removal tool for this one for sure. a little tougher due to its location. You really can't get it in there as easily as you would like, but uh, a little patience. There you go. That one likes its spot it wants to stay. You want to be careful because, like I said, you don't want to go damaging the ceiling surface and or the radiator. Probably going to have to lower the bike down to remove the other end. Okay, to remove the other end of this hose, I have a different hose removal tool. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of ways to get this done. I happen to have this tool, so we're gonna take advantage of that. You're not reusing these hoses, so if in the end you end up damaging this one a little bit during its removal, I don't think that's really the end of the world. Definitely a little tighter back in here. Looks like we have some movement. And off it comes. We'll go ahead and match this up to the other hose. You can see we have another protective cover that I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and move over to the new hose. Pull one of the clamps off the end. Okay, so we're ready to put this on. Uh, I've got the protective coating off the OEM hose and back on here. And let me tell you, that, that, took, that probably took like five minutes to get that on there. Took a minute. So let's go ahead now and just kind of start to thread this bad boy in there. This is gonna be just a tight spot. Tom's gonna do the best he can to show you as much as possible, but I need to be able to see to do it. So it just gets really tough. Uh, the hose clamp too, be right on the end of that hose clamp there to get it open enough. Kind of let it hang on there.
Now, once you move the regulator out, you can just kind of get your hand in there. Looks like it's gonna be just enough. All in all, this is not a horrible project. It's gonna look great when it's done. I think they do uh, market that, you know, these hoses, you know, are more slippery and cleaner shaped on the inside and they help improve cooling. That might vary from model to model, but uh, what I can tell you is they're top quality and they look great, especially when you pick a good accent color like we have here on this bike. This blue is really going to look great on this Jixer. 100% has me asking myself, dude, why did you not do this? It's one of those things I feel like we kind of all end up doing that. You know, you have something cool, you have it, you enjoy it, whatever. And then when you go to sell it is when you make it its best version of itself for whatever reason. If you're going to use a nut driver like I am here, remember you can really get on this and use quite a bit of torque. So you want to be a little careful that you're not destroying the hoses as you put them on. All right, all right. When we come back, we're gonna to begin to fill our cooling system. Okay, let's go ahead and let's put some coolant in our system so we can begin to work the air out of it. We're gonna use engine ice on this. Stuff has some freeze protection, lubrication for the water pump, anti-corrosive stuff, and it is gonna be track legal with most any org that you would do track days with. Some racing organizations will accept it. You wanna do the best you can to purge all the air from the system. Okay, we're back. So what I've done here is while I was assembling some other stuff on the bike and while Tom was charging the battery for the microphone that died, we let gravity do its thing with the cooling system. And a little trick that I like to use is once you've gotten a lot of the air out of the system by just continually refilling it until you know the bubbles stop working themselves out, what I'll do is I'll go around to each of the accessible hoses and I'll kind of palpate the hose like this. I'm not, not gonna squeeze it too hard right now because this system's totally full and I wanna leave it that way. Just squeeze it trying to force any air that could be up in this area out through the system, right? And kind of suck back in the coolant. I did it with this hose. I did it with the two other hoses on the other side of the bike and absolutely the level dropped a fair amount and then I refilled it and I let it sit for a period of time while we we're letting the batteries recharge. And now we're to a point where we can go ahead and get the radiator cap back on. We'll be able to put a little bit of coolant into our overflow jug, put the gas tank back on, start the bike and let it get up to temperature, right? You wanna let the bike get all the way up to temp, get the thermostat open, get the cooling circulating throughout the bike, the radiator and the engine. And then if it requires any additional, as the system is running and cooling down, the level in the overflow jug will help adjust that out. It's always a good idea to let it, after your service, let it totally cool down, right? Double check your radiator level and or double check your level here. Okay, fuel tank's back on. Now we're to a point we put some coolant into the overflow jug, just down to the cold level, right? We've purged as much air out of this as we possibly could naturally. Now, go ahead and start the bike, let it run until it reaches operating temperature, and then recheck your level. All right, there you have it, man. You know, I warmed this thing up, made sure that the coolant level after it cooled down was right where it needed to be. We are good to go. No leaks, no runs, no drips, no errors. 
and no overheating. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section of this video, I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm here to make sure you get the same result from your project, we do ours. Thank <laughs> you.